He had found the firm in the yellow pages, and the man had come round twenty minutes later. He'd scrawled the order on a grubby pad, then taken out a business card and leaned it against the freshly painted wall while he'd scribbled out the phone number and written a mobile number next to it. The mobile phone was rarely switched on, but they were coming this morning, first thing. Two hours later, a thin teenager was knocking on his door. Knock, knock, he said redundantly. Dad's just parking. You got a couple of ladders? Dad hates untying them from the top of the van. Three quarters of an hour and one row with a parking warden later, the man knocked on his door while his son was pulling the last of the plastic cover sheet from the sign. He led Roy out into the street, under the ladder, which was still propped against the door frame. You've put the wrong one up, said Roy. Nah, what you asked for, said the man. Suddenly, his son was not the smiling, talkative part of the operation. He was a hoodless hoodie, standing, glowering sullenly next to his father. A united front, ready to deal with problem customers, argumentative types, people who did not pay on time. My name is Roy, and this is a bakery, said Roy, calmly. And you've put up a sign saying, Ray's Place, breaded fish. What you ask for? repeated the man, slowly, accentuating each consonant, other than the obligatory glottal stops. Why, said Roy, still calmly, still a voice of reason, he cleared his throat and started again, why would I ask for a shop sign that's got some other bloke's name on it, and a type of food I don't sell? Well, that would be up to you, said the man. Here's the order I wrote down and he triumphantly produced a coffee-soiled crumpled sheet with Roy's Place Fresh Bread written on it. Ray's Place Breaded Fish, he read, squinting at the words. He looked up. Only, I wrote fish breaded, but I knew that didn't make any sense, so I swapped the words round, and I added the I to make it Fish Place and not just Place Place. No extra charge for the extra letter. That says Fresh. Not fish, said Roy. You saying my dad can't read his own writing, said the son. Stay out of it, Billy, said his father. No, I'm not. I'm sure this is a genuine mistake. I mean, look, granted, I didn't have any bread out when you were here two weeks ago, but I had a bread oven. I had a price list for bread and rolls and pastries. I had pictures of bread and bakers all over the shop. And today I've got the loaves out, which I baked four hours ago. You can smell them from halfway down the street. How could you have thought... I'd want a sign advertising fish. Then you're saying it's not a genuine mistake, are you? Said the man. You're saying I don't know my own job. I'm telling you that I've produced to high quality what you asked for and have installed the same. And listen, pal, I'll be round with my brother later for payment. Cash, yeah? Discount for prompt. The man and his son turned to go... Hang on a minute, said Roy, keeping it light and plaintive, stressing hang, not minute, keeping the we-can-work-it-out smile on his face, but to no avail. The man turned, head angled, index finger pointing vaguely at Roy. Then he was on his way, before Roy could even whisper the words, Trading standards? Get one little detail wrong his uncle had told him, and the whole business can spiral out of control. Chaos theory, he had said, smiling and nodding as though he had invented the concept. Butterfly flaps its wings in somewhere foreign, and over here your television aerial falls down. Roy smiled at the memory of sitting in his uncle's front room, cup of thoroughly stewed tea threatening him from the arm of the chair, listening to self-congratulatory tales of business acumen. His uncle had a point, although the problem with Ray's business was not with one little detail.